I would like to begin this worship service this morning by inviting you to join with me as I have taken this small portion of these lyrics from this amazing uh, psalm. From Psalms 89 and verse 1. And I want you to worry wherever you're at, I want you to read this with me together. Let's read this out loud. I will sing of the loving kindness of the Lord forever. To all generations, I will make known your faithfulness with my mouth. Pray with me. Father God, we're just so grateful to be able to come here once again. To sing praises and to honor your wonderful name, Lord. Our prayer uh, this morning, Lord God, is that through the message of song and that through the message of your word, for everyone who is joining with us, Lord God, that they would be touched, Lord God, that your spirit, Lord God, would just minister, Lord God, to their lives, Father God. I pray, Lord God, that you would just be with each person, Father God, who is tuning uh, and joining with us here this morning. I pray, Father God, blessings over them, Father God, that you would just be with them, Father God. I pray, Father God, that that although we are still um, separated, Father God, physically, we are joined together by your Spirit, Father God, for one purpose, and that is to sing praises and glorify your wonderful name. Lord, we thank you, God. Thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness to us. You are amazing. You are beautiful. You are wonderful. You are worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord, in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen.
The second reason why we are here is to edify and encourage the church body. And the third reason why we are here is to is to uh, is to show the love of God, His goodness and His faithfulness to all of you who are out there who may not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, so that you would come to know Jesus personally as your own Lord and Savior. So with that, let's continue to sing songs to God. Let's continue to honor Him with this song made new.
for those praises. It's wonderful to lift up our praises to the Lord and worship Him. He is worthy. This morning we're going to continue with last week's theme, which was uh, our soul purpose. Our soul purpose. And last week we talked about living. Today we're going to talk about dying. Last week we talked about living. This week we're going to talk about dying. These are the two points that Paul shares with us and uh, we're continuing with this theme about our sole purpose in life. And Paul says here in verse 21, Philippians 1.21, For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. For me to live is Christ, living and to die is gain, dying. And so let's focus today on dying and let's go to before the Lord. To ask him to help us to understand his word and apply it to our lives. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for these insights that you use the Apostle Paul to, to write. Hear your word, Father, so that we might be edified, we might be blessed, and we might live victorious. I pray that our hearts would be open to receive your word. Our minds would also be open to receive your word. And also, Lord, that we would be willing to apply it to our lives. Bless us now, Lord, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we're talking about dying this morning. And everybody, wow, well, date dying. I don't want to talk about that. All you Christians ever do is talk about negative things, morbid things. Pathetic things talk about death. But really this is, these are words to encourage us. These are words to wake us up to what really matters and why we are here in this world and, and what's beyond this life. And so we need to consider what happens to us when we die. And you know that phrase, no one is ready to live until they are ready to die. Are you ready to die? Are you prepared to die? That's what Jesus is dealing with here in these verses that I want to share with you this morning. And I want to take you now to our, our, our main verse, our verses in John chapter 8. John Gospel of John, chapter 8, verses 21 and 24. Listen to what the Lord says concerning death. Here in, in these verses, in verse 21, he says, Then he said again to them, the Pharisees, the religious people, and really to all people and to us, I go away and you will seek me and will die in your sins. Where I am going, you cannot come. And then go to verse 24. Therefore I say to you that you will die in your sins. For unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. This is a tremendous statement here that the Lord says to these Pharisees or religious people and really to all people in all times. This is a wake-up call here. And then in verse uh, 12, this is a tremendous, glorious verse that the Lord shares with us here. He said, the Lord says this, that Jesus again spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. How many people don't need the light of, uh, you know, the light of life? How many people don't need what the Lord offers, which are so many blessings, knowledge, understanding, life, everlasting life. Everyone needs this. Everyone should have this. Yet these individuals, these religious individuals dismissed it. These individuals here said, no. These individuals said, oh, you're crazy. 
They didn't take what the Lord was offering. These, our church should be filled with people in the world uh, coming here to hear uh, this great news of what Jesus offers. And yet people dismissed it at that time and people are continuing to dismiss the great news, the wonderful news of the Lord. Even in our day, people refuse to listen and to hear what Christ has to say. This is a tragedy. This is a terrible thing. I am the light of the world. I am the solution to life and to death. But yet many persons will not even take the time to consider that. We'll never take the time. And so in John chapter 8, verses 20, 21 and 24, the Lord is speaking to all of us. Just yesterday, I was looking at uh, the news and uh, they were talking about the beaches in Florida and they brought up a story about a lawyer who dressed himself up as the Grim Reaper. The Grim Reaper. He dressed all in black and he had his, you know, there, his uh, instrument of death there. And he was coming to the beaches in Florida and the people were looking at him, you know, what's going on? What, what is this? And his whole purpose uh, or his message to everyone there was you need to be sheltering. You need, you can't be out here in the beach. You can't be out here, you know, just taking this lightly. Uh, you can die at any moment, at any time. You can be infected with coronavirus. What are you doing? That was his whole uh, reason for dressing as the Grim Reaper to remind people to take the restrictions and to take all the suggestions seriously that our authorities are giving us. You know, what are you, crazy to be out here? You need to be sheltering, you need to be washing your hands, you need to be taking all these measures that our authority, the authorities are giving us. But you know what, uh, even though uh, that is true to a certain degree, and I believe that we need to also be part of the solution and wash our hands, do uh, distancing, uh, do all these measures that uh, the authorities are giving to us. We don't want to be part of the problem, we want to be part of the solution. But in the end, I believe that we need to be prepared to die. We need to be prepared to die. We need to be ready to die. Why? Because uh, death will happen to all of us. We can, we can try to evade it and avoid it, but all of us will die. All of us will die. Last time I checked, human beings, individuals were dying, one after the other, old, young, and one day it will happen to us. So uh, this is, why, why consider it? Because uh, it's gonna happen to each and every one of us. And also because everything comes to an end. All things come to an end. All good things will end, will eventually finish. Sporting events, entertainment, uh, traveling, you know, I'm going out, you know, I look forward to that trip to Italy or to some island and I look forward to it, I'm excited and it comes and goes, comes and goes. Sport, ah, I just can't wait to see the Super Bowl, I can't wait to see this game and we get all pumped up for it and then it comes and it goes. Entertainment, you know, oh, I wanna see this group and I can't wait to see this group sing and you go and, and it's over. That's, that's what life, everything in life happens and, and finishes. And the same thing about death, it's gonna come. Life, one, one day, will experience death. And then another, 
important problem here is that uh, it happens one time. <laughs> Death happens one time. It happens one time and, and you don't get a second chance. Now think about that. If you have a business and things aren't going well, well, you could, you know, uh, make some improvements, make some adjustments, and, and then go forward with your business, and and you get a second chance, you might get a third chance and, and, and with that business. How about uh, marriage? Uh, well, even there, in marriage you can improve, because you, things aren't going too well in my marriage. But you could make some improvement, make some adjustments, and uh, work on your marriage because you're, you're getting a second or third opportunity. And other things in life, that, that is true. There, there's second chance or, or second possibilities to improve or to do better. But when it comes to death, when death hits, that's it. There's no second chance. There's no second try unless you uh, have that religion where you believe in reincarnation that you, you know, you, you live a life and you die and then you come and live another life and then you die. They, you say, well, I'm going to do better in the next life. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible teaches that you live once, Hebrews 9, 27, and then comes what? Then comes judgment. Then comes judgment. That's what the Bible teaches and that's what, that's what the truth really is. And so if you are going to uh, learn anything, you're gonna, you got to get it right. You got to get it right. You got to make sure that if you die, you make it right. This is what the message is that the Lord is trying to tell these religious individuals and telling us in our day and time. Get it right. You only got one life. Make sure that you understand what comes beyond this life. That's another reason. What, what, what happens after I'm gone? What happens after I die? What lies beyond death? What lies beyond death? What lies beyond the tomb? Well, the Lord tells us that there is existence after death. But the Bible calls to be separated from God for all eternity. It calls it the second death. The second death. And the Bible says that Christians don't go, don't experience the second death. We experience the first death unless the Lord comes back. Everyone will experience physical death. But praise God that we will not experience the second death. We will not be separated from God forever. There's two existence after death. To be with God or away from God. Heaven, hell, that's it. There's not a middle place or, or what have you. There's only two destinies. To be with God or away from God. And I'm glad that I chose to be with God. I didn't deserve it. I can't buy my way to heaven. But the Lord offered it to me. And I received it and I took it by faith. I received it by faith and repentance. So how do we approach death? How do we look at death? There's a right and a wrong way. Let me give you a couple of wrong ways of, or, or really uh, wrong ways of, of approaching death. And the Lord in his mercy and love in verse 12, he says that Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Will have blessings, abundance of life. That's what Christ offered. The world life without Christ, uh, even Adrian Rogers said, uh, that life consists of, of, of three things. This great preacher, now with the Lord said, life consists of three things. What are they? Sin, sorrow, and death. He told that to an individual once, and the individual went, went, no, that can't be. He said, go think about it. When the individual came back to talk to Adrian Rogers, he, Adrian Rogers said, well, did you think about it? He said, yes, you're right. Life does consist of three things, sin, sorrow, and death. Even Benjamin Franklin 
said that there are two certain things about life. What are they? Taxes and debt. Taxes and debt. So death is, is something that's going to happen to all of us. Something that's going to happen to all of us. And where is it that, that people, where is it that we fail in regards to death? In the time of Christ, this is where these Pharisees fail, and this is where people fail, even in our day and time. What are they? We fail to look at this problem of death. We fail to look at it. We don't want to face up to it. I remember one individual talking about death and, and eternity, and the person said, no, 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 don't talk to me about, about death. Don't talk to me about, you know, the problems and all, all these about sin. Or, I, I said, okay. And people want to talk about economics, money, social uh, things. And they'll talk, they want to talk about those things, but they don't want to talk about death. They don't want to consider death. They don't even want, in light of the fact that many of their loved ones have died, their friends have died, uh, people they've known have, uh, throughout their life have died, but yet they will not consider death. It's almost illogical, it's almost irrational to think of it. The thing that is inevitable, the thing that will happen to all of us, I don't even want to give it any consideration. And I, I tell people, you know what uh, the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us on Calvary? He's, he was victorious over death. And when death comes, it won't be, you know, it will be something that will, you know, devastate us as believers, that will floor us, will completely, you know, overwhelm. No, why? Because Jesus overcame death. And I compare it to two things. I compare it to being hit by a big truck, being hit by a big truck. What do you prefer? To be hit by a big truck, full impact? No, no, no way. Or, do you, or would you rather step aside over here where uh, the shadow of the truck hits you? Which of the two do you want? The, the truck, the big truck hitting you, or the shadow of the truck going by you or hitting you? Hey, listen, I'd rather have the shadow hitting me than the full impact of a truck. I think that, in, you know, in a similar way, that's the way death is. Uh, or at least that's the way, that's what Christ offers. He said, what do you want? You want the full impact of death? The consequences of death? And this was the problem with these Pharisees and religious people. They failed to consider the consequences of death. They failed to, to think about that. And yet Christ said it three times, you're going to die in your sins. You're going to die in your sins. You're going to die in your sins. And when the Lord says something, three things, you better listen. But these individuals refused to listen to the Lord's warning. They listened to when, when we come to Christ, we are separated. Uh, death doesn't, we don't feel the blow of death. It cannot, uh, the impact of death is not felt by the believer because Christ took care of that on Calvary. We received and we accepted his offer of salvation. And death isn't a sting. It isn't a big impact on us like it says in 1 Corinthians 15. For the believer, it's like the shadow. You know, death is coming in my life and, and because I've been separated by Christ, He's taken me out of the path uh, and impact of death. He's moved me over here. I'm a believer. I'm a, I'm a Christian. And, and, and death will not impact me. That it impacts a person without Christ. Praise be to God. And so many people don't consider even to think about the problem of death. They don't give it any consideration. Any consider It's really crazy not to think about it. Ted, it's crazy. It's illogical. It's irrational. But I also want you to see where, where we fail, where people fail in the time of Christ and even in, in our time. They fail to 
to look at death. They look when they look at death, they look at it in the wrong way. Some people look at death as something, you know, uh, it's a disaster and and it will hit me someday in life and, and that will be the end of, of my life. It will be the end of everything that I had, everything that I always wanted. And, and, and so let's eat, drink, and be merry. So it, there's nothing. They look at it in that way as something disastrous. And then others look at death as something philosophical. Something philosophical. Why am I here? Exist? Why do I exist here? What is the reality? You know, what, what reality? What... Uh, they look at it that way in, in the knowledge and philosophically when death comes there'll be the end of the story it'll be like a tree dying and that's it and it's over and it will be the end of, of what? the end of you the end of you the end of me that's it other people look at it as a, you know, a, a death is a continuing in the spiritual realm Spiritus. You know, I go to an individual and they'll do a seance and, and I will pay the money and they will put me in contact with uh, uh, my beloved, my loved ones who have gone on and they're floating around. They're somewhere in that sphere, in that realm of the spiritual and, and hey, that's not true. And if they're, they are floating around or if you do see your loved ones, it might be Satan appearing like your loved ones. No, death is, some people just look at it as, you know, just the mode of death, the way, you know, how death will take place uh, in my life, in my body as it experiences death. You know, that's why I want to be out there uh, promoting uh, em environment, you know, to take uh, to environmentalist. And I, I think, don't get me wrong, I think we need to be good stewards of, of what God has given us in this world. That, we don't have to trash the world. We don't have to. But some individuals only think of their mo the mode of death, the way I'm going to die, my physical body. That's it. That's what some people. You know, am I going to be blown up by a hydrogen bomb? Am I going to be? Am I going to die uh, in a fire? Am I going to be? You know, die by drowning? Am I going to just the, the the way we we die, the way we'll experience death? But you know what death really is? And I, I want to share with you here. Here's the, the, the important point here where uh, some individuals fail, fail to think, fail to, to see death as, you know, what, what is the right way of dying? What is the, you know, what, what comes after death? And, and this is the spiritual one. This is that death, you know, we, meet, we need to look at death as a, in the spiritual way. The condition of my soul, how am I going to die? You know, is my soul right with God? Is my soul not right with God? I gotta get that settled in this in this life, in this world. And the Lord speaks to us about two ways of dying here. Two ways of dying. You either die in your sins or you die in the Lord. Which of the two are you gonna experience? The two ways, which one are you gonna uh, take? Are you gonna be willing to consider there's only two ways you'll die in your sins is what he told the Pharisees there you're going to die in your sins you're going to die unforgiven you'll never receive forgiveness you'll never receive what Christ has to offer you're going to die in your sins and and, th and this is sad because uh, that individual that dies in their sin, they've never repented of their sin. They never turned to Christ. They never trusted Christ. They never were saved. Oh, death is an awful thing for that individual. Because at that moment of death, when they are in their deathbed, when they are experiencing death at that moment, they have nothing to grab onto. They have nothing to uh, rely on at that moment. It is a strange thing. It is a, a, a terrible moment right there in their lives. Music can't comfort him. Their friends can't comfort him. They're, they're not there. They're not with him. They're all by themselves. Everything they look to in life, they just cannot depend on it, on those things at that time. Their money, their work, their friends, they, at that moment of death, there's nothing that will rescue them, nothing that can help them at that moment. All they
they feel is that guilt of their sin upon them that Jesus takes away at the moment of salvation. They have that guilt. They said, oh, the, the Ten Commandments, they begin to think about that, but it's too late for them. All those things that they heard about God are, are of no use to them anymore. It's over. They might see a glimpses of heaven. Who knows? And they see that it's a place of purity, a place where God dwells, a place where uh, there's joy, there's peace, and he can't be a part of that uh, experience it any longer. He, he was given an opportunity, but now all that he sees is the wrath of God. He wasn't fit. He wasn't prepared for heaven. And he can't go there. Unless you've prepared for heaven, unless you've been saved, unless you've been forgiven and, and dressed in the righteousness of Christ, you have the ticket to heaven, which is Jesus. You can't, you know, you can't go there if you don't have Christ in your heart and your life. But I don't want to frighten you. I don't want to, you know, this isn't my point because uh, the Bible says that love, true love, cast out fear. And let me finish with, with the, the positive here, with the uplifting message to you. That you, you and I can die in the Lord. And, that, and that's better, to die in the Lord. Revelation 14, 13 says, Blessed or happy are those that die, who die in the Lord. Happy are those who die in the Lord. This is a word of comfort to you if you're a believer. This is to strengthen your faith. This is to say you can go on, you, you, can, you, you have Christ in your life. You, you can be strengthened if you feel discouraged, if you feel down, if you feel depressed. Hey, get up. Go forward. Because you have everything to live for. You have Christ. You have Christ. Even David says in, in Psalm 37 that the, the death of the righteous is something wonderful. And even John Wesley, that great preacher, said our people die beautifully. Our people die. Christians die beautifully. They know how to die. They know they die well. What a wonderful statement. There's peace for the Christian when he dies. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, for whosoever believes in him should not perish, should not go to hell, should not be separated from God, but will have eternal life. If you believe, you, you're not condemned anymore. You have eternal life. And the consequences of, uh, of, of sin and death will, will never touch you because of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that marvelous? And when Lazarus and the rich man, when they died, remember Lazarus went to be with the Lord, went to paradise to the bosom of Abraham, remember? And he was taken by angels. What a wonderful experience. When you die in the Lord, the angels of the Lord are ushering you, are carrying you into the very presence of the Lord. And the Lord himself is with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. The one that was with you in life is also with you in death. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, that's a wonderful thing to know. That's comforting. The rock of ages will be with us and is with us. The one that covered us with his righteousness and forgave us of our sins and died for our sins and shed his blood for us. We are with him forever. Why? Because we are fit for heaven. We, we are now fit to go to heaven. We have been prepared to go to heaven. So I want to encourage you this morning to start making preparations or, or, or rely on the Lord, to trust in the Lord if you're a believer. Let him pick you up if you're discouraged, if you're feeling weak in the midst of uh, what's going on in this uh, coronavirus situation, crisis. 
Let the Lord lift you up. Let the Lord carry you. Let the Lord take you forward. That's what he offers to us. We don't need a, a million or a billion masks and, to be made for us. The Lord will watch over us. The Lord will care for us every moment of every day. And, and if death does come, he's prepared us for that. He's prepared us for that. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And I want to invite you this morning to give your heart, to give your life to Christ. Offer what he has to offer you. Take it. Take his gift. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Isn't that wonderful? Take it. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. It's offered to you and you receive it by faith and repentance. Trust in him. Give your soul to him. No wonder Jesus said, what shall a man profit if he gave the world and loses his soul? If your soul is so important, why don't you give it to the Lord? Why don't you put it in his hands, your soul? So it will be well with you. It is well with my soul. Can you say that? No, no, I can't. I, I've never given my soul to God. Give it to him by faith. Trust in Jesus. And you'll be in his hands in this life and forever. Isn't that wonderful? Because the Bible says that true love casts up fear. If you want to be rid of fear, rid of fear of dying, then accept the love of Christ. Because when you have the love of Christ, fear is gone. Fear is gone. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you, Father, for speaking to us this morning. Now I pray that you would be with us, Lord, throughout this week. That we might depend on you. That we might trust in you, Lord. That we might live for you. Because, Lord, we, we're prepared to die. So if anybody should be living uh, in victory and, and fullness in the life. It's believers. It's Christians. I pray that that would happen to us now. That we would be certain that we have Christ in our lives and that we would bless others all around us, Father. We're not here to put, put people down or to laugh at people. Lord, tears come to our hearts when we think of others who have not experienced your forgiveness and your love and don't have eternal life. I pray that we would have a heart for others. And if anyone needs to be active and, and be involved right now, are Christians. The, the church is not closed, it's open, it's us. The church is not a building, it's us. We should be making calls, we should be praying for our neighbors, or for our, for our family, for our friends, for all those that do not have Christ in their lives. That they might find Christ in this crisis. You are the Christ of the crisis, Lord. You are the answer for every crisis in life. You're the answer. Paul knew that, that you were the principle of life. That's why he could say, for me to live is Christ. And to die is to gain. It's a win, Father. Death is a win for believers. You say it. The Bible says it. And we need to believe it. Now, I pray that you would lead us from this place with joy, with victory, with gladness and assurance. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If we can help you in any way, please give us a call. Please uh, let us know. We're there to serve you. Pastor Osvaldo is there to serve you. Thank you. And God bless you.
Señor. 